Chris, what is our fourth main topic today? This is from MGV. Hi, John. It's been reported that David Zaslav has asked Todd Phillips, Joker director, to, quote, do more in the DC universe and potentially act as an advisor. Is this a good idea, as I'm not sure how much Todd knows about other DC properties? Thanks and go Leafs. You Oops. shut your dirty, Bye. filthy mouth. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> what do you yeah. have against nature? My Leafs, my maple Leafs suck. <laughs> they, they're so bad. Anyway, with that being said, yes, look, one of the big things that we have seen forming over Warner Brothers is that it's become clear that the axe of Zaslav swings freely uh, with with a hungering bloodlust uh, badly. But also one of the things that we've also seen a little bit of a picture as the smoke starts to clear, it looks like Zaslav is looking at sectioning off and forming his movie division into three distinct important arms. One of those arms being a DC standalone studio, which is, of course, what Marvel has done. Uh, Disney has done with Marvel forever. And they're talking about finally doing that. Now, of course, we've heard that David Zaslav is in consultation and talking with one of the greatest film executives in the history of the business, Alan Horn, and what kind of role Alan Horn is going to play over there. You know, we've been talking about that. We'll find out. But he's, man, what he did at Disney, shepherding the Disney movie era through the greatest years of success they've ever had. And now he's going to be over there working with Warner Brothers. To which degree, on which level, we don't know. We'll find out. But now we're also finding out David Zaslav is trying to get some other input from other filmmakers, including the director of The Joker, Todd Phillips. This comes to us from the folks over at Joe Blow who write the following. Of particular interest to Zaslav is getting the expansive DC universe back on track. Although the franchise has had its triumphs, the DC movies haven't enjoyed the consistent success of their competitors over at Marvel Studios. Some have said that Warner Brothers needs a Kevin Feige, a single voice to oversee their larger DC universe. Sources have told The Hollywood Reporter that David Zaslav has asked Todd Phillips to do more in the DC universe and potentially act as an advisor. Though the outlet notes that Phillips would not serve in an executive capacity. And that, of course, comes to us from Joe Blow. All right. This, to me, is very interesting because, number one, one of the biggest things about David Zaslav that everybody talks about is he listens to a lot of people. As a matter of fact, when they announced that Discovery was going to be taking over Warner Brothers, before they even had possession of it, David Zaslav called what the media dubbed as the tour. David Zaslav went on a tour around Hollywood talking to every smart person in the movie business he could and just listened and wanted to hear what they had to say. Obviously, that kind of culminated with him reaching out and talking to Alan Horn, who's going to be helping them out with their thing. That's the best thing that ever could happen for them. But now it's saying he actually wants to hear from Todd Phillips to, to advise a bit on what they should do at DC. Now, some people may get a little bit worried saying, Todd Phillips is not a comic book guy. Todd Phillips is not a comic book guy. And to which I would say, you're right. He's not really, he said himself, he's not really a, a comic book guy. But he made one of only two comic book movies in history to get nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. He made a comic book movie that made over a billion dollars at the box office and directed a comic book movie where his lead actor won Best Actor at the Academy Awards. He made The Joker. I am in a constant debate with my fellow movie fans sometimes about if you're going to make a movie about a certain genre kind of thing, you need somebody who's really into that genre. And I've always said, that's a good thing, but it ain't necessary. I often go back to that that original Dungeons and Dragons movie, which was made by one of the world's biggest Dungeons and Dragons freaks. That didn't help that movie be anything but a steaming pile of garbage that we all remember it to be. The, what you really want is people who know how to make good stories. Because if you know somebody who makes a good story and you bring them in the room and you say, listen, we got a story about a young girl who runs away and comes across a bunch of bodies that from a mass murderer, but to go and help the police. That means she's got to reveal where she is. Guess what? If you're a good storyteller, you don't have to be an expert on young girls who ran away from home. You just need to know how to tell a good, compelling story. If you're a good storyteller and you come across a script or whatever about a cop who, you know, uh, breaks a case wide open about international drug running that implicates, you know, certain high ranking men, you don't need to be an expert on international drug running to tell that story. You just need to be a good storyteller. And what Todd Phillips has proved is if you want to step into a movie about the Joker, 
even though it's very original, you don't need to be an expert on the Joker and you don't need to be an expert on comic book films if you know how to tell a good story. And so would Todd Phillips be the first guy I would line up to say, hey, David Zaslav should go talk to him? No, probably not. But he's directed arguably the most successful film they've ever made. And he knows how to tell these types of stories. So as an advisor, I think that sounds pretty damn good. And again, David Zaslav surrounds himself with people who are smarter than him on certain issues and topics to learn from them. And listen, the story is already saying he's not going to become the, the chief of DC films. He's not going to be the executive. But as an advisor, this just makes me even more impressed with David Zaslav. He's surrounding himself with good Academy Award level people. We want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Stamps.com. Now, guys, as a small business owner myself, I am always looking for ways to save costs, yes, but I know that our most valuable resource is time, and I'm always looking for things that can save us time. Stamps.com saves you both. Because when you're running a small business, every second counts. You can't afford to waste a single moment. So why are you still taking time out of your day to go to the post office when you could be using Stamps.com instead? Stamps.com makes mailing and shipping quick, easy, and cost-effective. How cost-effective? Well, you can get discounts that you can't find anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. And there's no special hardware technology you need. All you need is your regular computer and printer, no special supplies or equipment required. So guys, stop wasting time and start saving money when you use stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with the promo code CAMPIA for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts needed. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code CAMPIA. Rob, you hear about this. What's your first impression of it? Well, first of all, everything you just said, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, the, the, all of our venerable franchise properties, uh, I think one of the problems they're having now is they're not doing what you just said. They're, they're like Star Trek or Star Wars or Doctor Who. They're trying to make Star Trek, Star Wars, and Doctor Who stories. And when they were first created, you know, when George Lucas first created Star Wars, he wasn't looking at an, another Star Wars movie because there wasn't one. He was looking at Kurosawa's samurai movies. He was looking at The Hidden Fortress. You know, he was looking at Man With No Name movies or whatever. And I think that it doesn't matter if you're looking, it doesn't matter whether you're telling a story about a superhero or a guy in prison like the Shawshank Redemption. They all are about great characters and great story, first and foremost. And not only did Todd Phillips make a Joker movie, a, he didn't sit there and go, well, I gotta make it canonical to the DC universe. No, he went and told a really compelling story about how did it, how could a damaged man mm. wind, up, wind up as someone like the Joker? And he did it for $65 million. On <laughs> a $65 million spend, he made a billion dollars and got the Academy Award nomination and the Academy Award win. So if I was doing a comic book movie, the last thing I would do is look at comic books. And I'm a huge comic book fan. The comic book nest of it all will take care of itself. Now, if you're gonna make something canonical to the DC universe, that's fine, but it doesn't matter if the story isn't good. And like, if you're gonna tell a story about man against nature, man against himself, those classical story tropes, that's what you need first. And then if you want to if you want to tell a great Superman story, you know, Superman, we all know what, what Superman is, but the reason they can't make Superman movies is because it's really hard to make a great story about a man who's essentially invincible. Right. What do you how do you make something? How do you make a Superman movie? Not you can't just bring Zod back and make it e a Kryptonian equal to another Kryptonian. You need a reason to tell that story that an audience will buy into. Top Gun Maverick is not wowing everybody just because of the planes. You know, you have this story of a man who's reached the end of his career, and what is he going to do now? He's not a teacher, and he's, he's saddled with the responsibility of accomplishing a goal, and it's an actual great story. Yeah, the visuals are great, but I think what Zaslav is doing is, like you pointed out, he's going to the people that know, and he's going to the people that might have something to say that is out of the, out of the box. Right. You know, and Todd Phillips, what better person to ask, bro, uh, you made this Joker movie. Like, were you a DC comic book fan? Well, not really. I like Martin Scorsese movies. I like King Comedy. And I like Taxi Driver. And I'm like, 
let's that's make very evident. that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very evident. And but that's what he did. He didn't. I'm going to make the killing joke. You know, he didn't do that. So yeah, they tried to do that in animation. Didn't work oh, out. Didn't so work. Well. I mean, and that's the thing. I, I wish great. people would understand that that if you want to make a great franchise movie, don't look at the franchise first. Look at something else, you know, and then figure out where's that story. Look at the Bible, dude. I always tell people, like, Rob, you're not religious. I'm like, yes, but all of the great stories in Western literature are there in Scripture. Right. You know, I want to make the ultimate movie about Job, and people think I'm nuts. You can make an <laughs> awesome comic book movie about I Job. Thought you, I thought you were going to say an awesome comic or comedy about Job. Like, well, well, you could. I mean, that, uh, that would Robert, be interesting. Robert Heinlein wrote a, a book uh, 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 about Job. That was kind of a comedy, but I, that's what you do. You look at other places. That's where, where did Superman, what is the Superman story? It's biblical. Yeah. And they certainly went, by the way, and going back to something we always say about winning cures everything, right? Do you know why people don't complain that age of Ultron barely resembled the story that was in the comic books? Because the movie was great. Do you know why people don't complain that days of future past is so far removed from the comic days of future past because the movie was great as long as you make the movie great winning cures and solves all those mm -hmm. problems it's when the movie ends up bad that everybody starts pointing at, at different yeah. things like that as well yeah. anyway chris you're hearing about this todd phillips you know kind of advising a bit david mm -hmm. zasloff so you, what do you make of this i mean i think todd would be a great fit for this and i say that as somebody who i saw joker once and went i never need to see this film again but that's <laughs> because i've gone i know this guy I know him very, very well. I, I know him all and that I don't, well. And I don't need him in my living room regularly. <laughs> so I think he's done great, great work. And you have to remember, too, Joker isn't the only film he's made. He's made tons of other movies. He is known for his raunchy comedies before yeah. he did the Joker, right? The Hangover. Like the, hangover the guy movies. who did the Hangover make that Joker right? movie? Like, hangover. That's crazy. Old school. Uh, Euro Trip. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, so much stuff. Um, the, what was the war, uh, war dogs? Was that the other one he did? Or did war he Lords? do war dogs? War what? dogs with, uh, Miles Teller and yes. uh, yeah. that movie is great. That's a great movie. I forgot that he yeah. directed that. So he can do a lot of other things outside of this too. Right. And I think having a consultant who got you a best picture nomination and who directed somebody towards an Academy Award, that's nothing to sneeze at. And like Rob was saying here too, you don't need things to be exactly comic book accurate, right? Think about Watchmen the movie versus Watchmen the series. Right. Watchmen the movie was, the storyboard was the comic book. That was a shot for shot of the comic. And the comic exists and I can read that and I can go back to that whenever I want. But I wanna see how somebody else is going to take something. I don't go into a Marvel film so that I can be right the whole time. Right? right. I want to have some surprises. I want to have things that are unexpected. And then I also then get to have a discussion with my non comic book friends and go, oh my gosh, okay, so what's really cool is if you want to read the comic now, this happened differently and this person usually does this and da da da. And sometimes people care and other times they say, Chris, move on. But I want somebody to do something interesting with these bits of IP. I don't want to see the same stories I've read over and over again. And I, know a lot of the chat too we keep coming back to bruce tim to paul dini i love those guys i'm an animation queen i have their signatures or their autographs are the right framed in my home they also gave us the animated killing joke so they're not completely infallible with all of their choices too so yeah, i so think what do they know about making movies what right? do they know about making live action cinema and and that's why i always like when mm -hmm. i hear they actually go to live action exactly cinema people but yeah. I know it's interesting. It's going to be weird to see how this all plays out. Guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? And not giving him the executive role, but what do you think of the you know, Warner Brothers boss, David Zaslav, going to somebody like Todd Phillips and wanting him to get more involved and things like that? I think it looks good for them. And, you know, quite that, Alan Horn, all this kind of stuff. Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.